everyone. So, if you'd noticed in my first several videos, I refer to myself as Sphinx. And in my last few videos, I didn't refer to myself as Sphinx or anything. So, I have, um, during some time, I did some kind of personal gnosis in regard to the Sphinx. And I came to the conclusion that while Sphinx has been kind of like an identity for me and a, essentially a nickname for me for like almost 15 years, um, I feel like the Sphinx is significantly more than just an identity, just something that I relate to, that actually my um, feelings, my um, relationship with the Sphinx is really more as looking at the Sphinx as being a deity. I've considered constructing a religious practice based on the Sphinx, but that's something that I could possibly explore in the future. Right now, of course, my concentration is Wicca, um, and of course, the Sphinx is, is not something that is going to overtake Wicca. Um, it's something entirely different, which is also why I changed the name of my channel. Um, however, I did not take my Sphinxes off of my altar because they are important and uh, Sphinxes do act as guardians and they are guarding my box of weird creepy shit. So they're staying on my altar. But um, I chose a new name for my channel and I guess a new kind of alias. So it's Waterbound Witch, and it doesn't mean anything really. I actually came up with it pretty quickly. Um, I guess with the word water, uh, you know, I have a strong relationship with water, and I, I guess I can get to that some other time. But the word Waterbound is actually, um, it's one of my favorite songs. It comes from the folk, uh, the American folk song. It's like, it's like a bluegrass song, it's like, water bound and I can't get home, water bound and I can't get home. And uh, the American artist Dirk Powell um, redid the song and made it into um, actually something quite lovely. And it was covered by um, the musical group The Fretless. I'm really into bluegrass for whatever reason. So yeah, it's not like a craft name and I don't give, I have no intentions of giving myself a craft name and I guess that's something that I can touch on later. So this is the video for uh, week 32 of the YouTube Pagan Challenge and um, I actually chose to do this video because it would be kind of quick and easy and I kind of wanted to get back in the groove of doing videos and I thought this would be a great segue. So it's about um, pagan artwork. And, um, you know, I have a, a collection of, uh, of some two-dimensional pieces, or, well, I guess some three-dimensional pieces, too, of pagan artwork that I really enjoy. Most of what I'm going to be showing is really more specifically witchcraft-related, or by extension, Wicca-related. Also, at the end, I'm going to show a some of my own artwork, a uh, painting of the god and the goddess on individual candles, respectively. Um, that became my prayer candle, so stay tuned for that. I'm just going to be showing some pictures while playing the song Waterbound by The Fretless, so you can hear that. So without further ado, here are some of my favorite pieces of pagan artwork, and I hope some of yours.
storm come up and the trees come down Tell you boys I was waterbound Waterbound on a stranger's shore River rising to my door I carried my home to the field I just showed you some of my favorite pieces of pagan, witch, whatever artwork. And now I'm going to show you something that I made. Um, these are actually candles. Uh, the kind of candles that uh, you get at like, the grocery store. I think they're called like, seven-day candles or something. But unfortunately, um, if you don't keep them lit long enough, they tunnel really, really bad. So, I actually have been just using tea lights to put at the top of them and just not have to worry about the candle inside or anything like that. So, um, well, I can start with the god here. So, what made me do all this representation? Okay, so, um, of course, it's the horned god. I chose antlers. Um, I think most people usually choose antlers when de depicting the horned god. Um, and then, of course, he's got the sun. I think that there might be like a glare. I don't know. Um, we'll see if I can combat that. Okay. Um, I chose to give him a bow and arrow um, as, a, you know, a god of the wild hunt, so to speak. Fine. Uh, and he's in um, green brush, and I did paint it all around. So it's got a back to it as well. Um, oh my god, that glare. I'm come back that. And he's got a little pinnacle there. Um, so in terms of the kind of look I gave him, um, I decided to give him kind of a, I don't know, like an average fit male body, you know, not like a bodybuilder, because that's kind of like unnatural. That's like extreme body modification. Um, I mean, you have to like work really hard to maintain that kind of particular physique. 
So with him, it's it's just kind of like the typical physique you would get by just everyday physical activity. So, you know, it's just kind of average, really. Um, so I didn't want to make any kind of like particular beauty statements about him, just like a typical male figure that would have like a body that is physically active every day um, as a hunter. And then he's got some pretty sweet ass pants there. <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll go to the goddess. Oh, she's glaring real bad. Um, so for the moon up here, I decided to do the waxing, waning, full moon. Um, you know, a, a symbol of the maiden mother crone, triple goddess kind of idea. Um, the lunar cycles of the goddess. And um, also a, an additional symbol for Wicca. Um, <clears throat> So her depiction is, you know, I kind of tried to think hard about this, like how I was going to do it. Um, I chose, in terms of her body, I wanted to give her a very round face, mooned face, if you will. But I wanted to concentrate particularly on her hips. So her hips are abnormally wide. They're, it's just, it, it's just not uh, a normal thing, which of course it's supposed to represent fertility. Um, and I gave her just silver hair just in connection with um, the moon or silver, white hair, whatever. Um, and I had her coming out of the ocean. And um, what I didn't mention before when I was talking about my name change is actually water, particularly ocean water, is something that connects me with the goddess. Um, very strongly. I actually consume ocean water um, while trying to commune with her, and it does a spectacular job. So for me, like a connection with her in the ocean, it's not really like a traditional thing, but, you know, I just, I want to commune with her, and that really works for me. Um, so as far as her dress goes, uh, I don't know. I didn't really know what to dress her as. I mean, I thought about painting them both naked, but I don't know. I just, I just decided against it. Um, maybe partially because if somebody saw my altar, you know, it, it might freak people out enough. And then they see like naked people. <laughs> That might be a little too much. And also, um, I know nudity is a very important part of Wicca, and it's a um, call of the goddess, frankly. Um, and she's actually uh, uh, she's actually referred to as the naked goddess. Um, I just, I don't know, I just gave them clothes. Maybe it's not traditional, but I'm cool with it. It's a nice dress. <laughs> it's very snug. It shows her hips. Maybe the coming out of the water, it's clinging to her or something. Um, so yeah, and for for the doing these paintings, I used very little reference. Um, some things I looked up on what it looks like. I looked up the horns because I'm not really familiar with drawing antlers. Um, I looked up the moon because I wanted to get it semi-accurate in uh, to make it look like a moon, basically. Um, I looked at ocean water in moonlight just to get a good idea. I think that's it. Everything else was just kind of just out of my head, improvised kind of way. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to give it a more folk art look. So not something where I'm trying to achieve realism or anything. So it has kind of a, you know, a, a folky flair to it. You know, nothing of trying to perfection, very down to earth kind of thing. Um, so yeah, these are my God and Goddess candles. And this one goes all the way around too. Um, I love them. I think they're really pretty. Uh, acrylic paint is not really the best choice to go on glass because... I, I probably need to put some kind of lacquer over it or something to protect it. 
because it can come off very, very easily. So, yeah. That is all for this week on uh, Pagan Artwork. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Blessed be.